Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So here we're going to do a vertical projectile motion calculation where we are going to have two objects. So in summary, we have a ball A which is dropped from a 100 meter high building. So let's quickly draw our building. There we go, there's my good drawing skills over there. And so we know that that height is 100 meters. And that's going to be ball A. So I'm going to put A over here and we know that that's going to be dropped. Remember, keyword is dropped, meaning that it doesn't have an initial velocity. The initial velocity is zero. Then it says, whereas ball B is thrown upwards with an initial velocity, okay? So ball B is going to be thrown upwards. Okay, technically I should have added here from the top of the building, okay? It's not being thrown from the ground, so let's just add that in there, from the top of the building. Both balls are released at the same time and reach the ground at the same time. Question A says, determine how long it takes for the balls to hit the ground. So we need our formulas and we need to work out how long it takes for the balls to hit the ground. We do know they have told us that A and B are going to hit the ground at the same time. So I'm just going to use A's, well ball A, because I know a lot about ball A. First of all, I know what its initial velocity is. It's zero because it's, they told us that it gets dropped. Okay, so I've got the initial velocity for ball A. I always have the acceleration, remember that that's 9.8, and I know the distance or the displacement. And so I could use this formula over here, and I could get the final velocity for ball A. However, Kevin, why would I actually want to use that formula when I also know the distance for this formula, and this formula would give me time straight away? So guys, it's really up to you. You could use this formula, find the final velocity, and then plug it into this formula to get the time. Or you could just use this formula on the right, direct. I'm just going to do that. So we're going to have delta x equals to v initial change in time plus a half a change in time squared. I'm going to choose downwards as possible. And remember, I'm doing this for ball a. So we know that the displacement is going to be 100, and I say positive because I chose down as positive. The initial velocity of that ball is zero, the time we don't know. Gravity is going to be positive 9.8 because we chose down as positive, and then we have it as t squared. Now this part just falls away, so what we end up with is 100 equals to, now there's various ways to solve this, but I know from doing these questions so many times, that half of 9.8, well that's just going to be 4.9 t squared. Then you just get t alone, so you say 100, over 4.9 and then you'll square root your answer. So you should end up with a final answer of 4.52 seconds. So that is how long it will take ball A to reach the ground, but that's also how long it would take ball B to reach the ground. Question B, determine the initial velocity of ball B. Okay, so we don't know what its initial velocity is. What we do know though is we know ball B's displacement. Because remember, if we've got a 100 meter tall building, yes, I know that ball B is going to go upwards, it's going to turn around, and then it's going to come down again. But remember, displacement is how far is it from the start to the finish. And you do that as a straight line. So that length is still going to be 100. Of course, it goes up here and all of that, but that's called distance. But when you're using these formulas and you're using these x's, that's displacement. And so we have x for, for ball b, we've got x, and we've always got a, so that's nice, we've got a, we've got a, we've got a. We also have the time that a is, I mean that ball b is going to be in the air for. Remember, that's going to be the same as ball a, because they said that both balls are released at the same time, and both balls hit the ground at the same time. So we have the time over there. So we can use that formula which is change in x is equal to v initial change in time plus a half a change in time squared. I'm going to choose downwards as positive. So the distance or the displacement is 100. Because remember, the ball does go upwards. It then turns around and comes down. But if you look at the, the, the distance from the start to the finish, because the ball ends, ends up lower than where it started, that is called or well, that'll be a positive displacement if you're choosing down as positive. If you chose down as positive, but your ball ended up higher than where it started, that would be an, then you'd have to choose a negative value. So that's very important. Then the initial velocity, we don't know what that is, but we know the time is 4.52. 
then gravity is going to be positive 9.8. Why? Because I'm choosing down as positive. And then the time is 4.52 squared. Now we just need to solve for V initial. So I'm going to take the 100 and I'm going to minus this part over here. So that's 4.9 because half of 9.8 times by 4.52 squared equals to 4.52 V initial. I'm then just going to type all the stuff on the left hand side on the calculator. And so we end up with a very unsatisfying answer of negative 0.024 meters per second. The negative is to tell us that the ball initially, it was initially thrown upwards. That makes sense because we chose downwards as positive and so we get a negative answer and so therefore the initial velocity of B is going to be equal to 0.024 meters per second up. It was initially thrown upwards.